captures her. Foreign Minister has called on the U.S. to urge Kiev to stop its military crackdown in Ukraine's east. He made the request in a phone conversation with his American counterpart. Meanwhile, the uh, interim Ukrainian authorities insist the violence in Mariupol was the result of a terror attack on the local police HQ. And their stance has uh, once again had Washington's full support. Here's Guy and H. We know that Washington has Kiev's back. But when Kiev forces used heavy weaponry and tanks in Mariupol to storm a regional police headquarters where officers had refused to take orders from Kiev, and when the forces then shot at civilians who flocked to support the officers trapped in the building, when it's all shot on camera for the world to see, you would expect a little less biased reaction from the U.S. State Department. But here's what we have. We condemn the outbreak of violence caused by pro-Russia separatists this morning in Mariupol, which has resulted in multiple deaths. It seems no matter how many people get killed as a result of what Kyiv calls an anti-terrorist operation in the east of Ukraine, we won't hear a word of condemnation from Washington. Instead, whatever happens, the U.S. blames what Kyiv calls Russian separatists. Many of them want to be part of Ukraine, but on their own terms. But the U.S. has already painted a black and white picture of good versus evil in Ukraine, and there seems to be no room for other colors. One could only imagine what the reaction here in Washington would have been, had it been the ousted president, Viktor Yanukovych, unleashing tanks against civilians. But now roles are reversed and we see a very different approach. And calls have been getting louder in Ukraine's rest of southeast for a federal system of rule that would give people in the region the right to choose their own government. Another issue, that of the economy. The east makes up the lion's share of Ukraine's industry. But the revenue is then sent to Kiev and redistributed and the people aren't too happy about it. Plus, over 80 percent of the region's population speaks Russian, and many want the language to be recognized formally. But control of defense and foreign policy would still be down to Kiev. And with the Ukrainian army apparently now shooting to kill in southeastern regions, the support of the interim authorities in Kiev for the military crackdown could leave the West rather red-faced. That's the view of former UK intelligence officer Charles Shoebridge. When this kind of assault is mounted, uh, particularly by troops uh, who only have, uh, shall we say, uh, heavy weapons and live ammunition, they don't have, uh, seem to have uh, riot control equipment, uh, plastic bullets and so on, then civilian casualties and deaths are almost inevitable. Um, and that would have been known by the Kiev authorities. Although there's been no, of course, as one would expect, there's been no comment of condemnation about what's going on in Mariupol and elsewhere from the US and EU governments. Nonetheless, at some stage, this is going to become quite embarrassing for the governments that are, um, should we say, supporting this kind of armed action against what undeniably is um, largely consisting of uh, ordinary people trying to push back against tanks. At least two people have died in a blaze in the city council building in Mariupol, according to local medics. Uh, here are some photographs, excuse me, some video from uh, overnight. Two more people have reportedly been taken to hospital. The fire has now been extinguished, though it's not clear how it started. Locals say unidentified men threw Molotov cocktails at the building that's been the site of week-long skirmishes between pro-autonomy activists and the army.